Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kelly. I'm here with Esri and I'd like to welcome you to the ArcGIS for Maritime Server webinar. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items with you. This webinar is being recorded and you will receive a follow-up email with the link to the recording location once it's made available. You are encouraged to post your questions during the presentation. You can type them in at any time into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. I'll collect these questions and address them in our Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Today we're going to be discussing ArcGIS for Maritime Server and how it can help integrate your data into applications on your desktop, mobile, and cloud services across your enterprise. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our presenter today, Tom DePite, who is our ArcGIS for Maritime Server product owner here with Esri. Thanks, Kelly. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Tom DePite, and I work on our ArcGIS for Maritime development team. Today, I'll be covering how to make your maritime data available across your enterprise using ArcGIS for Maritime Server. The main topics will include maritime chart service and command. For each of these topics, I'll go over a few slides to overview the concepts and then demonstrate the tools and services. So where does ArcGIS Maritime Server fit in within the Esri ecosystem? Great question. As a concept, we call it the science of where, which provides you with a framework and a process for creating and applying geographic knowledge, which is the foundation of your work. It allows you to collect data and analyze it and understand, work in collaborative ways, and then put it into action. This is the power of GIS and the power of geography, driven to make better maritime products and better maritime decisions. The maritime world is changing rapidly by adding maritime data as another data source to existing land maps and other services, it can be used for more than navigation. ArcGIS Maritime Server enables organizations to drive a digital transformation and evolve into WebGIS, interconnecting systems, enabling collaboration, reducing production times, and becoming more efficient. The foundation behind Maritime and Esri starts with ArcGIS for Maritime and its three core products to establish a complete hydrographic workflow by receiving post-processed bathymetric data from practically any data collection and post-processing software into the ArcGIS for Maritime Bathymetry product, where data is stored, managed, and used to produce bathymetric surfaces and point data sets to be consumed through web services and to be used for chart production in ArcGIS Maritime Charting. Then produced S57 datasets can be consumed through ArcGIS Maritime Server, which provides map services. These three products are complementary to each other and can also work independently. The maritime solutions complement the platform, evolving any traditional hydrographic production system into a spatial data infrastructure, a marine SDI, by adding the maritime capabilities to the enterprise. Today's presentation will focus on ArcGIS Maritime Server. ArcGIS Maritime Server is an ArcGIS for server extension that has two main capabilities. Maritime Chart Service, where we publish web services using S57, S63 datasets and products on demand to create custom chart products as well as traditional paper chart products. As part of the Esri Geospatial Cloud, ArcGIS for Maritime Server applications support transportation, ports, energy, science, defense, coastal zone management, and the management of international boundaries and national assets for better governance. The first capability I will highlight is the Maritime Chart Service, also referred to as MCS throughout this presentation. As a server object extension to ArcGIS for Server, MCS will take your S57, S63, ENC, IENC, and AML datasets and publish them as OGC web map services, OGC web map tile services, 
and as an Esri map server based on the REST API. Though not meant for navigation, MCS was designed to mimic the behavior of an Ectus by supporting the S52 presentation library and Mariner controls. This includes over 30 different display parameters that can be accessed by the client, as well as over 5,000 different projections, and gives you the ability to group your features based on S52 view groups. Best of all, Maritime Chart Service reads the S57, S63 datasets directly to streamline the development and update process. Once your services are up and running, you can visualize and integrate all your products together as a dynamic, seamless online service to combine with other services and create and share compelling web maps. Now I'm going to access our Maritime Team's ArcGIS portal site. This portal is publicly available and does not require a login to access items on our ribbon. All the demonstrations that I'll be presenting today can be accessed from this site, as well as the services behind them. For Maritime Chart Service, we have four samples. There is one for additional military layers using sample data from the UKHO's AML product specification page, one for inland ENC using US Army Corps and European Union data that is publicly available, and a sample service using Alaska Polar Projection that demonstrates the use of various projections by MCS. MCS supports over 5,000 EPSG codes and well-known text for custom projections basically all projections supported by ArcGIS Enterprise. For my demonstration, I'll open the ENC sample. The S57 ENC datasets in this sample were downloaded from NOAA's public ENC site. This sample application consists of three custom maritime widgets that can be downloaded from GitHub. The URL will be provided at the end of the presentation and was configured using Web App Builder for ArcGIS. The three custom widgets include Maritime Identify, Maritime Display Properties, and Maritime Search. These three widgets allow users to quickly benefit from some of the custom operations that come with MCS. To start, I'll use our search operation and query for features with the object name containing Alcatraz. The results return and group by usage band in this sample. By clicking on the usage band, the feature records are displayed and some basic information about the feature, including the data set it exists in, is returned. You can further identify on the feature to get all of its attribute information and zoom to the feature's location. If you prefer, you can also search based on data set name. You can either type in the dataset name or use the asterisk and return all the datasets in your service. Again, the results will come back based on usage band in this sample. Expand the results by clicking on the usage band and see some basic information about the dataset, such as its name, edition, update, and compilation scale value. You can also zoom to the dataset. If you want the full information about the dataset, we have a more advanced query option that can be used to return all the metadata about the dataset, as well as permit information if you're using S63 datasets. Now let's take a closer look at our data. With the Maritime Identify widget, you can identify by clicking a point on the map or an extent. I'll use the extent option and select a buoy and associated features in that area. Initially, you get some basic information about the feature and can click on more information to see the attributes. If a feature contains an external file reference, you can click on the hyperlink to access its information.
Now let's zoom out to our original extent and use the add data widget to easily support mashups with other data sources and integrate with other services. From here, we have access to any published service via ArcGIS Online. You can also add your local organization account with a login, input specific URLs, and load in spatially enabled files. First, let's load in some world imagery hosted by Esri. Depending on the services you load, you might need to change your layer order. In this case, I'll move the imagery layer below our ENC layer. Now we have some imagery, so let's turn off our land features and special areas. The 12 sublayers you see for ENC represents the default configuration based on S52, which is the recommended presentation library for ENC datasets. The sublayers can be configured to meet any scenario. Next, I'm going to add an AIS service to the map. This is a 30 minute loop from San Francisco Harbor. Typically, you would use ArcGIS GeoVent Server to live stream your AIS service. In this scenario, we see harbor masters, vessel managers, and coast guards overlay the AIS information to analyze the targets against the maritime data for berthing operations and port and coastal security. Our display properties are mainly derived from S52 and are the same controls used by the ECTUS or ECS system for navigation. For the harbor master, once they know the ship's draft and other factors, they set the safety contour and depth for that vessel as they monitor it. As I apply the changes, you will notice the display change as the new settings are applied. Under the miscellaneous tab, we have an additional 24 settings exposed with another dozen that are not currently part of our sample, but provide additional flexibility such as rotation, DPI for printing, as we will see for pod, and forcing one chart to display on top of another chart, regardless of the loading instructions. The true value of these settings not only ensure you have the necessary S57 data being displayed, but the flexibility to reduce the clutter of unnecessary information when integrating other data sources in your map. For color scheme, you can select from an allowable list of options, such as dusk for night operations. You can turn on and off your data extents, as well as only show those that are currently visible. Data quality can be turned on for further analysis of your data. Display categories based on S52 grouping of features can be turned on and off independent of your layer settings. And since we are a GIS, we allow all display categories to be turned off if desired. Light sectors can be turned on and off. Display safe soundings when turned off really helps with screen clutter. It removes soundings that are deeper than the safety depth. Intended usage allows you to work with a single usage band or any combination of them. In this case, I'll just show my harbor data. And of course, you can change your symbology as well as a set of other display parameters. Next, let's load a few more layers, such as bathymetry and some military services. First, I'll load a NOAA bathymetry service from ArcGIS Online. And then I'll add a military service published by Esri for demonstrations using a military overlay for planning support. Now that I have my other services loaded, I will need to reorder my layers and move my bathymetry service below my ENC service. Now I'm going to head down to Monterey and we will see all of our services combined minus the AIS.
since our AIS service is only for San Francisco Harbor. As we zoom in, you'll notice that our bathymetry service is not showing through the ENC data. Let's set the transparency of our ENC layer to 50%. I can click on my new services since they have pop-ups enabled and get some information about the features. You can get the information about the imagery being used, the boundaries of the bathymetry, and the military features. Now there are so many other services, virtually limitless combinations of maritime data and other sources to analyze that we will stop here and move into ArcGIS Pro. As with the sample application, you can achieve the same mashup capabilities and additional GIS analysis of your data inside of ArcGIS Pro. In this project, I already have my NS Demo WMS service added, which is publicly available from our demonstration site. In this sample application, I was highlighting the functionality of our map server services based on the REST API. The REST API provides additional operations and functionality that isn't supported by WMS. However, WMS does provide many of the same capabilities, such as being able to turn on and off MCS layers, identify on features, and you can also gain access to our Display Parameters API using custom request parameters. You can also add additional services from portal, either by accessing your organization account or publicly available portals, such as the Living Atlas, or NOAA by using the All Portal option, and I'll search for the NOAA ENC Online service and bring it into a new map. You can also do what I just demonstrated within ArcGIS Online by adding your MCS service and accessing your display parameters and other custom properties. You also have access to all the same services by using Add Data. Now we have our first poll question that Kelly will open up for you to respond to in the next few seconds. What type of data do you use or have access to today? We'll give you everyone a, a few moments to respond before we move on. All right, as expected, majority is S57 ENC. Um, we'll get to the rest of the results later and we'll move on with our presentation and discuss products on demand. Now that we have demonstrated various ways to integrate your organization's data, as well as publicly available data with your S57, S63 services, we will now put the same mashup experience into an automated paper chart service, Products on Demand, also referred to as POD. POD leverages the Maritime Chart Service for its chart content and creates a GeoPDF directly from the MCS service layer, as well as any other supported layers in the map. ArcGIS Pro templates are used to customize your marginalia, in two borders and grids are provided as XML files, and Python is used to automate the process on the back end. Additional customization can be done to the application to provide the desired experience based on your users. This will be highlighted during the demonstration. With support for any size sheet of paper and scale, built from the latest S57, S63 datasets, your information products and charts are always up to date. POD provides two essential workflows that I'll be demonstrating. The first is to create custom chart products. These products are meant to support various operations and can include numerous services to mash up into a single output. 
The second workflow is geared toward traditional paper chart production and provides a framework for fixed products based on existing paper size and scale. All outputs are provided as a fully vectorized GeoPDF, which can then be further annotated with additional information. Now back on our Maritime Portal site, I can access our Products On Demand application. A key difference in this demonstration is how the MCS service is being presented within POD. The MCS service being used for POD has different default settings enabled. That changes the symbology to be more int1 friendly, as you can see by the change in land color. Also, compass roses are now being displayed. Certain display properties are not exposed to the user, as well as having some properties disabled, including scaling, which is why more data than usual at small scales will draw. This is to help ensure all features are exported to the PDF at the selected scale. As with our sample widgets during configuration, the pod application during setup can be configured to expose only the desired display properties and users require or that the organization deems necessary for their workflows. You will also notice that some of the values in the controls have been customized. This is to support users that may not be familiar with S57 acronyms such as DSNM versus the descriptive value of the dataset name. For color scheme, we extended S52, the presentation standard behind ENC data, and made it closer to int1 and provided a new option for the user to switch back and forth. This again supports both the traditional as well as the custom information product workflows. You also have the option to just turn on the usage band that you want to work with. In this case, I will only have my approach data sets displayed. With this option, I can see that my data sets are at 80,000 scale in this area. Now, I'm going to add my NOAA bathymetry service back into my map, as well as my imagery service using the Add Data option that provides access to ArcGIS Online services, as well as your organization services if signed into that account. In this example, I will change the bathymetry transparency to 50% and move my imagery below my ENC service. Next, we will define the type of product we want. There are two types, a fixed product that we will discuss more in just a minute and a custom product. For a custom product, you can input any scale select your page size and orientation. I will enter 80,000 since we know that data exists in our area, and I'm going to select A0 because it will demonstrate another aspect of POD, which is to include chart notes on separate pages within the GeoPDF that are referenced by the extent of your custom product. These notes are stored and maintained in the GeoDatabase. Now I will click in Chesapeake Bay, and my AOI will appear. Now that I have my AOI, I can name and export my GeoPDF. You also have the ability to move the custom extent or delete it if you want to start over. I'll click on Export Products. At this point, POD accesses the correct ArcGIS Pro template based on your page size and orientation that was configured 
with your custom surround elements, logo, and notes, and then requests from MCS and the other services the necessary data to display at scale. The output will be a Geo PDF. Export times are dependent on system resources, so for the sake of time, I'll open a few Geo PDFs created in the same area prior to the presentation. For my first example, I'll open up a 25,000 scale in Chesapeake Bay with only the ENC and bathymetry services turned on. Since I selected A0 with notes, you will see the notes that were included in my template on the bottom of the page, as well as other chart notes on separate pages from the Notes Geo database that are being referenced in this area. In the second example, the only difference is that I turn off my ENC land layer to allow the imagery to show through. Now for fixed products. This option is geared towards traditional paper chart production. The great thing about this is that it doesn't require a production database, just the published S57 datasets. First, I'm going to turn off my imagery and S57 service so you can better see the extents. In this example, we have predefined chart footprints for 40,000 and 80,000. This, of course, could be set to any scale. Now that I have selected 80,000, I will click on the extent I want to make into a product. Once selected, we can go into our print queue, name the output, and create our Geo PDF. As with the custom products, I have an example that I made from this extent to show. This 80,000 fixed product has both the ENC and bathymetry services turned on. When you define your extents, you can assign a page size as well. A0 was used, so you will see the surround elements as well as the additional chart notes on extra pages in your Geo PDF. To recap, POT provides an automated way to produce paper charts directly from S57 datasets, as well as provide workflows for customized information products using not only authoritative S57 datasets, but other services that can be accessed through your organization's portal or online anywhere in the world using WebGIS. All right, now we'll move into our second poll question. What type of products would you like to produce with POD? We'll give you a few moments to respond. All right, as you can see, it looks like 45% customized charts. Now we'll wrap things up. Harbor Masters, Anti-Piracy, Amphibious Warfare, Voyage Planning, Combat Management Systems, Vessel Traffic Management, Wind Farms and Gas Exploration, River Information Systems, Border Security, Marine Spatial Data Infrastructures, Operational Planning, Port Security, Submarine Cabling and Pipelining, Marine Protected Areas, Coastal Zone Management, Mine and Counter Mining Operations, UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, and backup bridges becoming geospatial platforms are just a few of the needs we support. I also want to take a moment and emphasize the word partnership. Sure, Esri has an official partnership program that companies can join, but what I'm talking about is the partnership our development team has with you as a customer, both large and small, and the unique synergy that it has created over the years to build and continue to advance our products 
to ensure your market requirements have the right solutions. There are a lot more features with MCS and POD that I didn't have time to go into today, so I encourage you to use our demonstration site and look at the additional supported operations that MCS provides. The Maritime ArcGIS Online Organization Portal has many other samples and gets updated as new releases are published. The Maritime GeoNet page is our team's way of communicating directly with our customers' community. You can receive blog updates about our products and events, as well as post questions and access links to GitHub and various other Maritime videos. GitHub is where you can find many sample scripts from our desktop products, as well as the widgets I demonstrated for MCS. If we don't get to your question or think of a question later on, please use the Maritime email alias and send us that information or any other comments or suggestions you have on this webinar and future webinars you would like to see. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Tom. We have a couple of questions that came in through our Q&A portion, uh, so I'll go ahead and read, the, read through those for you. Uh, the first question is, I'm a 10.7.1 user, but don't see the add data option in POD. Where is that option? Okay, so with that, uh, what I was demonstrating is our 10.8 release, which is due out any week now, and that's where you will see the, uh, the new add data option as well as um, we included the ArcGIS Pro templates. Okay, and next question, is ArcGIS for Maritime Server supported in AWS and Azure? Yes, um, in fact, the demonstrations today um, are all based on hosted in AWS. Okay, and next question, can you run Maritime Server in a secure environment? Well, that's a good one. That's a common question we get, and the answer is yes. Um, since we're an extension to ArcGIS Server, we inherit the same security protocols and ability to run uh, in isolated environments. So there's no special requirements for our extension with that. Okay, and I believe this is a follow-up to the previous. What about S100 support? Yes, S100. That is a hot topic these days. Um, S100 does is supported within our ArcGIS Maritime charting, our desktop solution today, and that will continue to grow across the enterprise um, as and into ArcGIS Maritime server as the standards mature and the market grows. So we will see that coming. Okay, thank you. And we have a few more questions that are coming in here. Does runtime support S57? Oh, runtime. Um, yes. Uh, runtime does have um, an SDK for .NET that supports both S57 and S63 um, for ENC datasets right now. Okay, and what license is required for ArcGIS for Maritime Server? Ooh, licensing, that's, that's always an interesting one. Um, for, for ArcGIS Maritime Server, you either need a ArcGIS Enterprise Standard or Advanced License, or you can have ArcGIS Enterprise Workgroup Standard or Advanced. Um, and if you already have server, well, then you just have to match the existing licensing. Um, and as always, uh, with licensing and pricing questions, it's always best to contact your local distributor on that. Okay. And I believe we have time for one more. What if I want to export a TIFF file from POD? Well, as we mentioned, we do a GeoPDF um, from POD today, and that can be brought into Adobe. And from Adobe, you can export uh, TIFF files from there. Okay, and I did notice we had a few additional questions in our uh, Q&A box there. We will get to those. Uh, Tom will be replying to you individually via email. So don't worry, your questions will be able to get answered. Um, and with that, I wanna thank everyone for attending the webinar for our ArcGIS Maritime Server. 
And just as a reminder, a recording will be made available in the next week, and we will be emailing you out a link for the location of that recording. And as always, you can always email us with any additional questions uh, using the alias maritime at esri.com. And again, Tom will be responding to the questions that we didn't get to uh, individually for you. And with that, I thank everyone for attending and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.